there's a ton of reasons to be searching for a CPU cooler upgrade. The main reason is probably to get those performance gains. But for those running the stock cooler that came bundled with their CPU, it might not seem like you're getting enough positive for the 40 or 50 that you might spend on it. Well, I'm here to tell you you're wrong, dead wrong. Upgrading your system with the right cooler is gonna give you a quieter, cooler, faster, and even better looking PC. And I'm gonna show you just how huge that difference can be with the $50 Be Quiet Shadow Rock 3. The last CPU cooling video I did focused on taking a huge premium air cooler and comparing it against just a kind of a pretty good AIO. But with that, not everyone can afford an expensive AIO or fit a giant air cooler in their build. So today let's take a look at Be Quiet's most recent mid-range air cooler and find out just how much performance we're going to be gaining when upgrading over the stock cooler. Now I do completely understand why many are still running their stock CPU coolers. But one of the biggest factors can be worrying about spending $30 to $150 for a stock cooler that, by all accounts, seems to be running just fine in your system. Then you've got trying to filter out dozens of options, find the right cooler at the right price, and then the hassle of actually opening it up and installing a new dadgum heat box. But that's where I come in, right dang now. And that's because I want your system running as cool, fast, and quiet as possible. I'm a very nice tech boy. So let's do that exactly with the Shadow Rock 3, the AMD Ryzen Wraith Cooler, and the 3900X that I have on the board. And before anyone says anything, I know that the Wraith Cooler here isn't what comes on the 3900X, but one, it's what I have, and two, it's still gonna show that big difference. You're still gonna mainly see maybe a little bit less gains if you're running something under that. It's just to show the difference. It's what I got. You're gonna see it. I don't care. And as I've been doing, here's a real fast what's in the box. We've got the nice box and safety packing, the Shadow Rock 3 itself, one Silent Wings 2 fan, a really awesome Phillips head screwdriver for free, the AMD mount, the Intel mount, thermal goo, mounting bar, and my thermal goo. What's really impressive here is at a $49 price tag, its TDP is set at 190 watts. This means it should be able to hang with my Ryzen 3900X and then anything below that, and probably the 10700K and below on the Intel side. This is all achieved with five nickel-plated copper heat pipes and the surface area created by the large fins. And of course the unbelievable Silent Wings 2 fan that can hit real high RPMs and keep everything nice and quiet. Combining for a mad cute package that is super light because it's not all that dense. And as far as cooling goes, Be Quiet is one of those brands you can almost always trust to be at the best or right up there with the best in terms of low temperatures. That is just good engineering, y'alls. Grab a Phillips head, your specific mounting bracket, add mount spacers, screw on the metal brackets, apply an entire tube of thermal goops, gently set cooler to CPU, screw mounting bar to metal brackets, insert Phillips head into the top hole to reach the underscrew, Clip on that fan and plug her in. Oh, and real quick, if you have an Intel stock cooler, replace it now. Get rid of it. It's terrible. It looks horrible. You deserve better. Everyone deserves better than that stupid. And I don't care if they updated it recently. I saw it. It looks terrible still. Um, it's definitely not going to work. Throw that on an i9. Throw that on a new i7. Yeah, see how fast your computer explodes. But AMD includes an actually usable cooler, which is really, really nice to have, especially for those that don't want that extra thing and just want it all in one package. It's not only surprising that it works pretty well, but even these lower end models actually look pretty solid. It's, it's a thick, nice, meaty piece. With the benchmarks that we're gonna be looking at, you're gonna notice that it's kind of a similar trend. You might not always get a huge performance increase, but the biggest difference is gonna be the temperature and a lot of times that is insane. In 3D Mark Time Strike Extreme, the score didn't go up very much, and the FPS really only went up by one from the couple tests I ran. With the temperature, we're looking at 13 degrees Celsius less, and that is a lot of sound to take away. Cinebench is really interesting. It's gonna push that CPU really hard to knock out that test, and we definitely did see a bit of a score increase on that, but importantly, look at that 17 degrees Celsius drop in temperature. So here I ran 20 minutes of IDA on full load. With that CPU getting blasted continuously, this is a good one to show what it's gonna be looking like when using it in an extended session. So with that, we're dropping 16 degrees Celsius over that whole amount of time, 
that's a big difference. The CPU is able to handle a way better boost clock over 150 megahertz and use a little bit more wattage. In Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a huge difference in temperature. We're talking about 20 degrees Celsius less. And even with the FPS only going up by two, we all know what it's like when you're trying to run it a decently difficult game or run it at a better resolution. That thing is gonna be just pounding all of your system. And so that 20 degrees can be the difference of, you know, not being able to hear anything else in the room going on and having a nice serene calm going down. And then I ran Assassin's Creed Odyssey at the same 1440p on high settings. But here it's the exact same thing, we're going up by 1 FPS but dropping 20 degrees. So look, whenever it actually comes to the specific scores or the FPS that we're doing in those benchmarks, it might not look that impressive right off the top. For anyone that isn't really concerned with temperatures, sure, it doesn't appear to be having that much of a problem. But it really, really is. One, quality of life, obviously. You're not gonna, I, I keep pushing the same thing. It's not gonna be that much sound. But from what I've seen, whenever I'm doing anything that's cooling a CPU, a GPU, system, whatever, everyone wants to know about the noise output. Because I think most of us have come to those times when we're like, oh my God, this is so loud. Whether you're streaming, whether you're just talking to your buddies while you're playing, you do not want everyone to hear just your computer and it's blasting over absolutely everything. But with that, an extended play session is going to pound that CPU over time. We saw that with Ida especially. Your CPU isn't boosting as much as it should be or as much as it wants to. The more cooling and the more headroom that you give to it, the more performance you're gonna get over time. So say that you're playing Warzone for a four or five hour game session. Do you think those FPS are gonna hold up on that stock cooler for more than 30 minutes? It's not, it's gonna start going down. Your CPU is gonna start getting just fried, not, not dead fried, but you understand. It's gonna start taking that pounding. Well, and it's probably not gonna last as long if you keep smacking it with that. When I was running Cinebench, it popped up to 90 degrees Celsius, and that test only took, what, maybe 25, 30 seconds? And 90 degrees isn't the worst thing in the world, but you don't wanna be getting up to 100, and if you're already at 90, you're probably on your way up. But that's all performance, essentially, way better cooling, much quieter, it's obviously gonna be worth it there. Aesthetic is a huge and important thing with all of this. This is the centerpiece of your man area, of your studio, of your girl area, whatever. You want it to look freaking dope. And you know what, the AMD one, I can't complain too much, it does look good. And it's weird that this is a main point of any of this. But these Be Quiet coolers are way bigger than you think, and I think it looks pretty dang dope. Look at that, look at that sweet, sweet top side. It's a good looking boy. We have these clips, so you could take this fan off, and if you wanted to add your own, you know, controllable LED fans, boom, pop one, pop one on the other side. I did that with the, uh, the Dark Pro 4. Worked really well, you get even more cooling gonna see even more and get that customization. Overall, this thing is super worth it. For 50 bucks, you're not gonna do any better. This is the one I'd choose. I think it is the perfect middle ground and it actually does scale up pretty well, getting definitely more towards that Dark Pro 4 premium side than it is to the lower end with the Cooler Master, which isn't a terrible thing, but it's just not gonna hold up to this. And that's what we want.